This is Wembley. Perhaps not the Wembley you have vivid memories of because you've been there on one of those sporting occasions that have made the name Wembley synonymous with all its brightest and best in British sport. But this is Wembley in 1924, the time of the British Empire exhibition. Jobs were scarce and somewhere in those vast grounds is a Canadian ex-officer selling cigarettes from a kiosk. That's where the romance of Wembley rarely starts. For in a few years, thanks to Arthur Elvin's courage, determination and foresight, the nation had this home of British sport. To the famous stadium in 1934 was added the Empire Pool and Arena. The stadium has become the permanent home of the FA Cup final and the scene of so many of England's home soccer matches. Year after year, the tumultuous cheers of a hundred thousand of his subjects greet the appearance of His Majesty the King at the entrance of the Royal Tunnel. The first post-war final between Charlton and Derby County was a marathon. Score one all after 90 minutes. Charlton's equaliser certainly seemed to please His Majesty. Then came extra time and the Derby avalanche. Doherty and then Stamps bring the score to 3-1. Princess Elizabeth is keen to note the finer points of the game. Play continues and a second Stamps goal makes the issue safe for Derby. Not what Charlton supporters expected, but they'll be there next year if they can get the tickets. Yes, Wembley is the magnet that attracts millions year after year from north and south alike. In this Wigan Wakefield Trinity Rugby League Cup final, thrilling runs like these sent another 55,000 fans, a rugby league world record, back home happy. The stadium provides a fitting background for the stirring scene of Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Kent taking the salute at a march past of 7,000 of the finest specimens of Britain's youth. Ten years after Arthur Elvin took over the management of the stadium came, through his foresight and planning, an equally renowned home for indoor sports. Here in the Empire Pool, the European Swimming Championships are in progress. Who could forget the glamour and spectacle of Wembley's ice carnivals? The World Skating Championships. the thrills of ice hockey and the achievements of the Wembley Lions. Swift transformation and to the Empire Pool and Arena, Arthur Elvin has brought the finest boxing, amateur and professional, to an eager public. Another Wells Championship, table tennis. Here, experts Bergman and Varner thrill thousands of fans as the powerful lights dispel the darkness of night. <music> Wembley, one of the pioneers of greyhound racing, packs its stadium. Speedway riders vie with greyhounds in attracting capacity crowds. Champion riders like Tommy Price get the cups, Arthur Elvin the credit for perfect organisation. In 1945, Arthur Elvin was admitted a member of the Order of the British Empire. In the 1946 honours list came further recognition, and AJ, as his friends know him, became Sir Arthur. An occasion celebrated on July the 31st, 1946, when Sir Bracewell Smith and a host of sporting friends gave a dinner in his honour. 
dinner graced by the presence of the Earl of Athlone, Knight of the Garter. Sir Bracewell and Sir Arthur greet their guests, L.C. Bowker, remembrancer to the City of London. George Hicks, MP, was the next to arrive in this room at the Café Royal, decorated with carnations in the traditional red and white of Wembley. Names prominent in every sphere of British life, peers and commoners, cabinet ministers and sports stars, leaders of the services and the city, all came to pay their tribute to the new knight. Lord Marchwood shakes hands with Sir Harry Methvin. Sir John Duncan seems to have a private question for his host, the Lord Mayor-elect of London. Everything's taken care of, replies Sir Bracewell, as he greets W.H. McGrath, J.P. Science is represented by Professor A.M. Lowe and Greyhound Racing by Wembley Judge Captain A.E. Bryce. The Realm of Finance by Sir Clarence Sad. The British Council by General Sir Ronald Adam. Accent on Sport and your commentator is seen coming in with Stanley Rouse, Worldwide Ambassador of British Sport. Who's this? Ah, the Right Honourable Sir Walter Wummersley. Followed by Malcolm McCorkadale and P.V. Hunter. Colonel Holbrook of the United States Army. Behind him, Arthur Henderson, KC, MP. Sir Bracewell greets James Joyce. A welcoming smile for Stuart Southwood and also for J.W. Boyle. After them came Alderman Crook, then Mayor of Wembley. Bernard Mills, still carrying on the famous tradition of Bertram Mills Circus. The guests are now arriving thick and fast. Charles Ede, followed by Lord Denham. Captain Nielsen. Then Air Marshal Sir Victor Tate. Henry Horne shakes hands with Sir Arthur. Sir George Mitchison. And Sir Gordon Craig. The party is now well underway, but there are still important guests to come. Politics are forgotten as Sir Patrick Hannon chats with his host and the Right Honourable Narin Bevan. What's that, a prefab? No, only a camera rostrum. Labour peer Lord Strabolge joins the party. And now a special group as Sir Arthur talks to Sir Ronald Adam and Sir Bracewell chats with Lord Athlone and Lord Wigram. The party is completed by the appearance of the Right Honourable Herbert Morrison. He's warmly greeted by his host and the guests. He shakes hands with Sir Noel Curtis Bennett. The Home Secretary obviously hadn't expected as much limelight as he's getting. But with the cameras focusing on the group, the Home Secretary really is in the limelight. What about a drink now? Thirsty work standing under those lights. I don't mind if I do. The conversation gets confidential. I say, um, you noticed those two? Discussing affairs of state? Oh, I hardly think so. More likely, what time's dinner? No, it's more important than that. Ah, what are we having for dinner? That's it. Yes, that's more like it. Austerity, I take it. What do you think about it, Lord Strabogi and Professor Lowe? Of course. But splendid courses. Well, you won't have forgotten if you were there. The speeches that followed were witty and polished, but all sincere in their tribute to the new knight of Wembley Stadium. It was a really great evening, and the finest compliment that can be paid to our host, Sir Bracewell Smith, is that the organisation was worthy of Sir Arthur Elvin, MBE.